Hello, podcast listeners. You are now listening to the Coffee, Health, and Science Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan River, and I want to thank you for tuning in today. Make sure to share the Coffee, Health, and Science Podcast with a friend. Send a favorite episode, text it to a pal. We appreciate you guys spreading the show. Make sure you're subscribed. Give us a good rating and review, if you would. It really, really helps us climb the charts and grow as a show. Thank you so much. Today, we have a show favorite, a return guest, truly one of my favorite people to speak to ever. Dr. Sanjeev Chopra is on the line. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. I'm on top of the world. What have you been up to during pandemic, during lockdown? You've been uh, you've been busy online giving talks. Tell me about it. Yeah, I've been giving a ton of Zoom talks and uh, <clears throat> talking about how we can recalibrate our life during this time of chaos, consternation, and crisis. I work with an organization. They have 220,000 clinicians in America. And that uh, talk in the form of an interview was broadcast to them. Wow. And then through a charity that I support called Maestro Cares, they're building 21 orphanages all over the world. And they have something like 60,000 supporters. So again, I was interviewed and that message went out. And then to a whole bunch of few thousand physicians in California, Latina group, I wrote a small article, short article with a colleague in California that was published in the Times of India. So, you know, Jordan, very humbling, but in aggregate may have gone out to about a million people. That's incredible, Sanjeev. And we love what's yeah. going on with Maestro Cares. Why don't we just uh, give out the URL, maestrocares.org. Wonderful, wonderful foundation, again, for orphaned and disadvantaged children in Latin America in the United States. Thanks for bringing that up, Sanjeev. We love Maestro oh, Cares absolutely. here. absolutely. And then I'm writing um, a couple of books. One I've finished writing in 78 days. Normally, a book takes me a year, year Jeez, and a half, Sanjeev, even two years. Machine. No, no, I'll tell you how this happened. So, you know, I'm not traveling. Ah. And I'm at home. And <laughs> normally travel takes up, you know, two weeks in the month. Yeah. And I have a brilliant colleague, Martin Abramson. He and I run the continuing medical education division for the Department of Medicine at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. And we direct and speak at courses in Santa Fe and Boston. Mm. Last year, we were in Kuwait, Singapore. So he's also at home. And he's one of the world's experts on diabetes. That's his specialty. Mm. So I said, let's write a book on diabetes. And we connected by Starleaf. So he's on his computer. I'm on my computer. I can hear him. He can hear me. And we put up a draft. I had, for example, put together something on the promise of stem cells in curing type 1 diabetes. Wow. And then we look at it. And I go, okay, I don't like the way chapter, the paragraph two is written. Let's rewrite it. Mm -hmm. Or paragraph five should come before four. Why don't we look up the top 10 stem cell institutes in the world? Why don't we look up what Doug Melton, who heads the Harvard Stem Cell Institute, brilliant professor, has to say about his passion? And it turns out he has two boys, and they both have type 1 diabetes. So he's on a lifelong mission to cure that. And at the end of three hours, that draft has become a chapter. Right. And so we worked every day from anywhere between two and a half to even four and a half, five hours. And 78 days later, the book was done. It's with the literary agent in New York. We have 18 amazing endorsements from world-renowned deans, professors from our country, but also from Singapore, from Colombia, from Australia, from Italy. That's incredible. So very fulfilling, you know, yeah. putting And, and when putting you would use. usually be so busy, tied up, you are you truly are yeah. taking lemons and making lemonade. I would love to ask <laughs> you, though, you know, I would love to ask you, diabetes coming up on this show, show so much and in the world of coffee, what have you learned? What has changed in your mind when you, when you think about diabetes and approach diabetes since you began writing this book? Um, not much. We did learn a lot, both of us, as whenever you're writing, you have to be so explicit and accurate. Mm. If you and I are having a conversation, it, it's very different. Right. But, you know, the role of the microbiome, the 100 trillion bacteria in the GI tract, Ooh. the relationship between four different liver disorders and diabetes, 
And then we have embedded in it very fascinating stories. So Martin Abramson, my colleague, has a patient who died recently. She was about six years of age in Canada when she developed type 1 diabetes. Mm. And insulin had just come around like five or six years earlier. Wow. So her mother could give her insulin, which was life-saving, thought she'd never have a full life, but she met an amazing guy, married him. He was a consultant, traveled all over the world, developed complications related to diabetes. Mm. She lived to 92. Wow. And Martin interviewed her at one of our update in internal medicine courses, seven-day course, where we get five, 600 people from 50 countries. Mm. And she was so articulate and got a standing ovation. Martin calculated that during her life, she took about 120,000 injections of insulin. Mm. So we have embedded these stories of how our patients have inspired us, how, how they've taught us. Wow. So it was a wonderful journey uh, writing that book with such a great friend and colleague. Well, of course, uh, next time you're on, once you're a little further along in the production, I can't wait to read all of your titles, Sandeep. Well, I really am a fan of yours. Thank I, you. I, I, you, you, sign, you, sign, you may not remember. I'm sure you do remember. Uh, you signed a book for me, uh, your leadership book, yeah, and I have that yeah, right, right on top of the good. big five. And I do appreciate yeah. you, my friend. So I'm oh, going to dig into this, to this diabetes, yeah. um, this new diabetes piece. But today, yeah. today we are doing an episode of what I have dubbed Ask Dr. Chopra. Sanjeev, yeah, you've gotten some great questions from the listeners. I have a couple questions, and may I pose sure. them to you on air? Absolutely. I love this first question. Someone was asking about the health benefits of coffee, and specifically the future. And they ask, do you think that science will eventually crack the code of coffee and health and discover, maybe even distill, what makes it so good at preventing disease? So, you know, that's a very Western-oriented concept. <laughs> we want to go to the nitty gritty and see what's the active ingredient. Well, it turns out coffee has a thousand ingredients. Right. And in the ancient form of medicine in India called Ayurveda, mm -hmm. they actually, if they're using a plant, will pluck it at the right time in the day. They will take permission from the plant mm. before plucking it. Mm -hmm. And the plant itself everything in the plant has some utility. So to distill it to one active ingredient, I don't think is necessary, and I don't think it's going to happen. Wow. And plus, hey, enjoy the aroma of coffee mm -hmm. and enjoy the friendships that come by drinking coffee, even with a stranger. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's less and less now with the lockdown, but I've made so many friends in coffee bars or on the airplane, somebody is sitting next to me and they order their second cup of coffee. <laughs> and I say, do you drink coffee? How many cups? And they're like, who are you? Uh, and then I tell them about the health benefits. So I think um, let's just enjoy the aroma and enjoy the companionship, the friendship, the kinship. I think there are a few things in life where you make friends very instantaneously. And one is drinking coffee, the others playing golf, the others travel. <laughs> those those are some of the things where it just happens without any effort. So coffee's supposed to be, for lack of a better word, holistic. The idea of distilling it, yes. I think is fascinating that you think A, defeats the purpose, but B, probably isn't going to even happen. So enjoy the yeah. cup as it is. Enjoy the coffee, yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's exactly the type <laughs> of answer I was looking for. Okay, so the next question. <laughs> Now, this one I think that you'll have an interesting answer for, but again, maybe maybe it'll be similar to the last one. If you could take the medical effects of coffee that it has on one disease and put it into a cheap, safe, and effective medicine pill form, which would you choose? So the disease I'd choose, and I'm a little biased, it would be liver disease, chronic liver disease. Mm -hmm. So I'm a hepatologist, liver specialist, and it turns out as many as 1.5 billion people in the world have chronic liver disease. Jeez. So, uh, and if you drink two to four cups of coffee, amazing benefits. People who drink that, and it has to be regular here, they have low levels of liver enzyme, less scarring, less hospitalization rate, less mortality, and less liver cancer. 
-hmm. And cancer arising in the liver is the third leading cause of cancer mortality in the world. And uh, there, in three countries, including Egypt and Mongolia, it is the number one cause of cancer death. So we could spread this message and say, listen, drink coffee. It is amazingly good for your liver. It's not liver detox with cleansing solutions or uh, other treatments. It is coffee. Wow. So I call it the magical elixir. Is there not a lot of other treatment out there for prevention of this sort of thing? Like, is that something that medicine doesn't? Well, I I think the second thing that would prevent major liver disease would be for us to exercise, to eat healthy foods, Mm. and to not be obese and overweight. Right. So the dominant liver disease now is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. By some estimates, it afflicts 70 to 100 million Americans. And it's related to obesity and or diabetes. That's incredible. But so coffee helps with get, those things too. It definitely helps. In this condition, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, the people who drink coffee have the least amount of liver scarring. Mm. So that would be, that's another way to prevent. The third is we have a hepatitis B vaccine. Right. You and this vaccine before, is yeah. amazingly safe and is given to every child in our country and in many countries. In Taiwan, about 30 years ago or so, 15% of the general population had chronic hepatitis B. And it's the one condition where you don't have to have the underlying substrate of cirrhosis, severe Uh scarring, to get liver cancer. So if one acquires hepatitis B during childhood from the mother, then those people, even without cirrhosis, about 30% of the time, when we see liver cancer in that setting, it's without cirrhosis. So the hepatitis B vaccine in Taiwan was given in childhood. Within two decades, the prevalence dropped from 15% to 1.5%. Wow. And childhood liver cancer death. So people were dying at age 8, 10, 12, 14. Due to liver dropped cancer. Dropped by wow. well, primary liver cancer due to hepatitis B. Childhood liver cancer mortality dropped by 75%. Jeez. So it's truly the first anti-cancer vaccine. Now we have a second anti-cancer vaccine, that's HPV, human papillomavirus. Again, a very effective vaccine that's given now to adolescents, both girls and boys, and it markedly lowers the risk of two or three different cancers. Interesting. Very interesting. So, you know, it's... Uh, fascinating too, because I don't think the liver gets the same play. We've mentioned this before, and I, I certainly didn't know about that. That pandemic is what it sounds like in Taiwan yeah. before the vaccine. Yeah. That's wild. Sure, yeah, very, very wild. Um, of course, though, you had to go with the liver, Sanjeev. I'll, I'll, I'll pardon you on that. I'll let you get a slide for <laughs> yeah. that. Uh, here's a great question: What excites you most about coffee outside of the world of health? You know, this is something very recent. And uh, what's happening is that people have figured out, there's a startup in UK that they have figured out and have scaled how to take the coffee products that we normally dump. Some people take coffee grounds and mix them with, you know, this, mix it in the soil for their plants. Right. But these people have figured out a way of converting it into fuel. Oh, wow. And the pellets can be used to provide industrial boilers and to heat commercial greenhouses. And the coffee logs apparently burn 20% hotter and 20% longer than the traditional wood logs. Coffee logs, that's insane. Yeah, isn't that insane? I I just read this. And then I think I posted it on Facebook. And of course, my coffee drinking friends were thrilled. That's incredible. And that's exactly the type of thing that we need to, f- to find a use for because there is a vast amount of coffee grounds just going to waste right now. So sure. anything that we can repurpose them for. Yeah. I remember being excited about that article and then also seeing an article that they're turning them into shoes. There's a Kickstarter oh, really? right now. Yeah, wow. that they're, they're taking coffee grounds and somehow they it turns into this plasticky fiber and you can make shoes out of it. And I guess they're nice. And I guess they also smell a little bit like coffee when you get them out of the box. <laughs> How wild is that? Sometimes? I love it. Love it. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so just to make sure we have enough time, we're going to jump into the next question. 
really excited to hear your answer to this one. Who is Dr. Chopra's favorite coffee drinking figure from history? Oh, no question. It's Voltaire, the French philosopher. Mm. He had the most amazing sayings. He he said, um, every man is guilty of all the good he did not do. Mm -hmm. If you have a talent or a skill, you must share it. He also said, cherish those who seek the truth, but beware of those who find it. (laughs) What a great saying. Now, he apparently, and you can Google this, he apparently drank 50 to 72 cups of coffee a day. Right. And when I mentioned this in some of my liver talks and, you know, a talk I give every year, a couple of talks at a keynote in Anaheim, we get about 7,000 clinicians and somebody or a few people will raise their hands and interrupt me. What size though? And I say, how does it matter? It doesn't even matter I, at that I put, point. <laughs> I put my, yeah, I put my thumb and my index finger very close to each other. And I say, even if it's this small size, you know, 50 adds up to a lot. <laughs> That's a really good point. So he's my favorite coffee drinker from history. We just did a couple coffee history episodes and Voltaire came up. I actually I actually stopped and read a list of his quotations, Sanjeev. You yeah. would have loved it. And what really struck me is he had this, um, and, and maybe this is my, you know, kind of my bias, but he had this personal development flair to him. He was... He almost had like um, I don't I don't want to misquote, but almost like a stoic style of taking personal responsibility and taking control of your life. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very, the way to live our lives. Very, yeah. very um, groundbreaking to think someone yeah. back then has those same thoughts that we do and, and still applies. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely love that. Final question for Dr. Chopra: What is Sanjeev's favorite region for coffee, and how does he take his coffee? So I think my favorite region, there's so many, but I think one of my favorite regions is Costa Rica. It's Mm. an amazing country. It has so much natural beauty. There are um, wonderful coffee plantations. There are natural forests. There are rainforests. And they have a very enlightened view of treating them. So Mm. something like 75% of the rainforests are totally preserved for the animals. Oh, it's wonderful. They say they say the animals are not there for your entertainment. Mm-hmm. So you can't go into these rainforests. And the other ones they've carved out very small sections where you can go. They also had uh, an amazing enlightened ruler when uh, Costa Rica uh, Costa Rica became uh, finished their civil war. Mm. And we're talking about sometime in the 1950s. Right. And he declared, we're never going to have a military. We're never going to have an army. No one's going to attack us. We're not going to attack anyone. And they invest all that money into ecology and education and other things. Jeez, what an enlightened way. Yeah, they have a little bit of security and police, which you need. Now, uh, I was so intrigued, and I'd heard it's the only country in the world, but in reality, there are about 20 countries that do not have a military. I didn't even and know they that. include, yeah, they include Micronesia, Panama, the Vatican City, ah. you know, <laughs> so it's small countries like that. But Costa Rica is my favorite country. I've been there only once. I would go back in a heartbeat. Mm, love it. Absolutely. So, what about how you take your coffee and what region you like the taste of best? I like so many different, you know, I like uh, Purity Coffee, uh, <laughs> Disclaimer, I'm on their board, but um, <laughs> No, well, that's a Colombian. Organic, yeah, Colombian has really, yeah, really um, it's caught made my. Colombian, yeah. Ethiopian. Oh, Brazil Ethiopian? Largest, yeah, I love Ethiopian yeah, too. Yeah, Brazil is the largest coffee producer in the world, but I think Colombia has the best coffee most of the time, but there are, you know, pockets uh, all over the world, even some great Mexican coffee some good Ooh. Indian coffee from Mysore, India, from South India. So, right. and I drink it black. <laughs> um, yes, straight black. You know, just make it simple. My only recommendation for people who say, can I add some milk or cream? Yes, you can. And there's a study from Europe looking at more than half a million subjects. And it doesn't matter how you drink it and how you make it. They make it differently. They drink it differently. Everyone has lower mortality, men and women. Whoa. The only thing that we should never do is put artificial sweeteners. And we should never drink diet drinks. It changes the gut microbiome and actually makes glucose 
intolerance mm. worse. Your blood sugar will spike higher after having a Diet Coke. And, you know, Coca-Cola has seen the writing on the wall. So they bought Costa chain in Europe for $5.2 billion. Wow. Pepsi is doing the same. They're coming up with a coffee product. That's fascinating. So I think in the next 10, 20 years, we'll see less and less and less soda consumption. And we'll see more and more coffee consumption. I think the two best drinks in the world are coffee and water. <laughs> well, they're the two top drinks in the world. That was, yeah. a, that was a wonderful moment to end on. I don't know if you're familiar with the term mic drop, but that was, that was awesome, Sanjeev. Thank you so much for taking the time, my friend. <laughs> oh, you're most welcome. Anything Got coming it. up? Uh, any talks that we, can, we should know about? The book, obviously, the new diabetes book we'll look out for. Yeah, I give a lot of talks for charities. And, you know, next time I do, I'll uh, send you a link. Oh, and please. you can share it with the readers. Yes, but I I gave a talk that they rec many many talks by Zoom and this one was recorded. I'll send you a link. Fantastic. We look forward to everything you do, Sanjeev. Yeah. We'll let you go and then we'll wrap up the show. Thank you so okay. much, my friend. I can't wait my to pleasure. hang out with you and have some coffee together soon. <laughs> well, Absolutely. You know, we'll soon enough. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Take care. Okay. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. Sanjeev's the best. What can I say? Uh, get at me on Instagram at Jordan River IG if you have questions for Sanjeev. Cannot wait to bring you guys more awesome coffee content. Thank you so much for being loyal listeners. We'll see you next time on the Coffee Health and Science Podcast. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs>